everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is going to be something quite quick and quite spontaneous. It is going to be a haul, but it is unlike any haul I've done before because it is not a fabric haul. It is an estate sale haul. I don't know if that is an international term, but estate sales are basically when someone passes away or moves out and all of their items are sold, generally by a third party. I keep an eye on local estate sale listings, but most of them are too far away, or they're more like moving sales and focus a lot on furniture and modern items that don't really interest me. However, this week I got lucky and I realized there was one coming up on Friday that looked to have a lot of vintage clothing and also quite a bit of sewing supplies. Unfortunately, they didn't have vintage clothing, but they had plenty like seriously so much sewing supplies. They had two sewing machines and probably 15 boxes of fabric that absolutely lined the walls of a single room as well as part of their garage. There's also a box of trim, boxes upon boxes of thread, embroidery floss. There were a bunch of patterns from the 80s and everything in between that is sewing related that you could possibly imagine. I think I was quite restrained, which is probably mostly because I didn't have a lot of time to look around, but in the 40 minutes we were there I managed to grab a whole bunch of vintage notions as well as a whole bunch of vintage lace. So in today's video I'm going to share all of that with you and I really hope you enjoy. So this is the haul. I ended up spending around $65 I think and I actually spent $40 and then I realized I forgot some stuff so I went back and spent another 20 some dollars and I got all of this. And believe it or not, I was very restrained. There were probably 15 boxes of fabric there. There were giant tubs full of embroidery floss and ribbon. They must have had 20 or 30 pairs of scissors. They had several sewing machines. So all things considered, I think I was very restrained with my purchases, but I still bought quite a lot. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into this. <laughs> now this I honestly bought mostly just for the box. I thought it was really, really cute. I don't know when it's from, but I really like vintage boxes just in general. And this one is for embroidery cotton. And then inside it does have a few strands of embroidery cotton as well. This box is actually for a half dozen pairs of finger scissors, but inside there's a whole bunch of thread. So these are all 250 yard spools of silky thread. And these are all shiny threads or rayon threads, which don't work particularly well in my machine, but they do work okay for embroidery or hand sewing. Uh, so I wouldn't have purchased these full price at Joann's or even on sale at Joann's, but for around $5 to get 70 spools that are in pretty much perfect condition in every color you can imagine, I was willing to do that. And basically the way this worked is that nothing had prices marked, so I just filled a box full of things that I wanted. Right at the beginning I found a box of lace I wanted, so then I just kept adding to that as I found stuff. And speaking of boxes, I also bought two plastic containers full of embroidery floss. So this one just has the kind of larger, thicker spools of DMC floss. I own a couple of these or have a couple of these in neutral colors in my stash, uh, and I like using them sometimes for decorative pop stitching or for sewing eyelets. So I I thought I'd go ahead and get the ones they had there. Now speaking of embroidery, I also purchased this box absolutely full of metallic embroidery threads. So I just went ahead and organized it so there are gold ones, thinner gold ones, silver, blue, purple, uh, green, black, rose gold colors, and then there are some different variations up top. But I thought this would be fantastic for doing some embroidery work on historical costumes, and there's such a wide selection in here. And I've never done gold embroidery work before, I know it's supposed to be pretty challenging, but hopefully this will get me off to a good start with it. And then I also purchased some spools of metallic yarn, which is a little bit thicker. These are mostly gold, but there are a few colorful ones in there as well. And they just had drawers and drawers full of this, but I didn't have the time to look through it. So I just grabbed a couple bags of the colors I thought I would use. So I ended up buying three of these Simplicity pattern boxes. One of them was empty and was $2, and then the other ones had stuff in them. But I just quickly reorganized everything before filming this video. So this isn't what originally came in these boxes. And this one I've gone ahead and put some eyelets and some eyelet pliers. I don't know if I'm going to keep these because I have other ones that I like better, but they're still good to have. And then I have a whole bunch of coverable belt kits which I was really excited to get. They don't really sell these anymore, at least not that I've seen, and I haven't thought to look for them online, so I was really excited to get so many of these for such a low price. And I didn't film it, but once I got home and started sorting through this stuff, it's kind of like Christmas, because basically everything was sorted into large bags that I couldn't really sort through. So I just threw the bags in my box, and then once I got home, I got to see what I got. These are some bra slide closures, always good to have around. There are a few decorative buckles 
in this lot, which are also good to have. And then another differently sized cover buckle kit. This box came completely full of metallic silky threads. So these are the metallic ones, whereas the other ones are rayon. So these are much harder to work with, but again, they can be good for some hand sewing work. And though I wouldn't have paid full price for these, I was quite happy to add them to my box of stuff and the overall total of 60 something dollars. In here, I just have a whole bunch of snaps and hooks. Uh, seriously, so many came in here. There are also a whole bunch of hook and eye skirt closures, which are always good to have. So I am all set when it comes to these. I don't think I need to buy any anytime soon. They also had button pins, which are something I'm quite excited to have in my stash. There are little hooks for making your own cufflinks. So just lots of fun little notions that are good to have around. Speaking of notions, also in one of those bags of goodies, I had a whole bunch of Velcro. And I threw out the smaller pieces because Velcro isn't something that I use particularly often. But these ones seem to be in pretty good shape. They're still in their packaging. So I decided to keep them just in case I have a project that requires them. I also bought this pair of scissors and I didn't really need a new pair of scissors. But I thought the design of this was really, really pretty. And I don't have any scissors quite like it. Uh, and again, this was just in a box with probably 20 other pairs of scissors, but this one stuck out to me. Also, I got some bias tape, and then I got a packet of dress belting. And if you recall the 1950s skirts and sewing through the decades, I was quite puzzled by what they meant by belting, because modern belting is very thick. It feels almost like uh, dog leashes. It's a nylon or cotton webbing. But this is what is still called waistband lining or waistband tape, which is a buckram based washable um, kind of stiff interfacing. So now I understand what they meant by that instruction in the patterns and now I'll be a little bit more knowledgeable and make some skirts more accurately moving forward into the future. And you can still buy this stuff, it's just sold under a different name, it's no longer called belting. And in here I just have all of these zippers and again these were kind of in a bag. These are mostly invisible zippers which aren't my favorite but there are some normal zippers in here too and there are all sorts of different colors and it really varies quite wildly. Zippers in Joann's are just ridiculously expensive so I'm always happy when I can add to my zipper collection. They're very easy to store and they always seem to come in handy. Now this was by far my favorite purchase and my favorite thing that I found. These are two sets of June Taylor pattern weights which were created in the 1950s and 60s. Now pattern weights used to be almost as popular as pins when it came to securing a pattern to fabric. They don't leave marks in the pattern or in the fabric and they also hold the fabric down as you're cutting which means you're less likely to lift it up and you can get a more accurate cut. So pattern weights are very common but they've kind of come out of fashion because they're just not as convenient to use. So now the only ones you can really find sold are custom made ones on Etsy or sandbag like ones in Joann's. And I don't really like those ones because I don't feel like you can get very close to the edge of the material and I also don't feel like they're heavy enough. So my preferred pattern weights are Wonder Weights and I have about a dozen of them that I use pretty frequently. But for a while now I've wanted to get some more and I've really fallen in love with these June Taylor pattern weights. I've seen them pop up a couple of times on eBay but they always sell for about $45 for a set of four plus shipping. So they're really expensive um, and I've just never wanted to pull the trigger. But they are so cute. They come in the shape of scissors, an ironing board, a sewing machine, and an iron. I think they're just adorable and they're the prettiest shade of powder blue to boot. So as you can probably tell, I managed to get my hands on some. So I purchased the two sets that they had, uh, which gives me a total of eight. And these were part of the second purchase I made, which was $23. So I paid $23 for these and the two boxes of thread that I showed you earlier. So I'm super happy with that. Basically, if I resold these, I'd make back everything I spent during this trip and then some. So I am super pleased with this purchase and I'm planning on holding on to them and I can't wait to work with them. They just make me smile because they're so cute. And it's gonna make me smile when I'm editing videos and I can see them too. So that's the easy stuff out of the way. And the next stuff I have to share is lace and buttons. So I've got a huge box of buttons over here and I think I'm gonna switch around the camera and hold them up one at a time just to show you what I have. The woman who had this stash clearly liked funky buttons. There are some sewing themed ones as well. And these are mostly wood or bone or stone or ceramic, which means they aren't machine washable, which is another reason I probably won't gravitate towards them. But they are really cute. Cute. Here are the last of those funky ceramic buttons. And here I have a few smaller quantities of buttons that were set aside, and these are more elaborate metal buttons. I will organize these into smaller bags later, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. In here I have a whole bunch of single buttons or smaller quantities of buttons, and a lot of these are pretty funky too. There are some normal buttons that ended up in here, but there are also ones like this, like this, 
like this and like this. I also ended up getting a whole bunch of doll buttons mixed in and I don't even think they sell these anymore. So again, these are probably something that I'm going to list on eBay since I just can't envision myself using them. But they are very, very cute. Look at how tiny they are. But don't worry, there are lots of buttons that I will keep. <laughs> There are four cards of these multicolored little ones, three cards of these really pretty glass ones, some random wooden ones, a few variations of navy buttons, and there are multiple cards of this one, some random cards. These ones are really pretty. There are tiny gold leaves, and then there are some orange leaves and some wooden leaves. And there's a good quantity of all of these. Here are some more novelty buttons, but ones that I will probably use. I think these hand-painted cards are adorable, and I think these metal teapots are really nice as well. There are a bunch of white buttons in here, mostly smaller quantities, but I do have two cards of this one. Then we have red buttons, two cards of this one, which I really like. I think they're very cute. I've got some really nice little stars, and then three cards of these larger ones and one card of this one. That's definitely enough for a blouse, which is nice. These are a whole bunch of matching buttons in various sizes. I think there are five cards of the large ones, and then there are two cards of the medium ones and four or five cards of the little ones. More navy buttons along with some really funky sewing themed ones. Beige-ish toned buttons. Again, I've got two or three cards of this one. This is the only card of that. And then there are two or three cards of this one as well. These guys are all on their own, but they're pretty cute, and they're more decorative buttons, so I don't think I actually need many of these. I think they liked stars, as you can probably tell by the three cards of star buttons here. They also like teddy bears, and I must say that I do too. I think these are really, really cute. These ones are really cute too, and there are a whole bunch of cards of these. They're just little plastic acorns, and I think these would be adorable on a blouse. I also have some really sweet shell moon buttons, and then these wooden heart buttons. There are a few boring buttons still in the box, but I wanted to show you the pink selection, and this is probably going to be the last selection of buttons. That's just a vintage card of slimline buttons. There's also some really pretty pink ones there. But I like the bunny buttons the most. I just think these are adorable and I can't wait to use these for something. The last thing I have to share is lace. Uh, and when I first got there, I went straight into the garage and made a big box of lace, which is where all of this came from. And that's the box that I just kept adding to with all of my goodies that I found. And this is what really struck out to me right away. It's a beautiful green um, and ivory lace edging. And I actually have some fabric that would go really, really nicely with this. And I just thought it was so, so pretty. And I don't know how much is there, but it looks like a pretty decent amount. This is a bag of various ribbons. There's some really pretty lilac silk ribbon in there, some really pretty white silk ribbon in there, and there's some, some larger pink ribbon, which I think is silk as well. So I'm gonna have to go through and wash those ribbons and then get them spooled properly, because they are a little bit worse for wear. There was some rickrack in this bin as well. I didn't used to be a fan of rickrack, but I've seen a few 1850s sorry, 1950s dress that feature it and are really cute. Um, so I purchased a little bit recently and I'm looking forward to finally using it for something. This is the rig rack that was sold alongside bias binding, but they also had a few uh, little cards of it which were probably sold by the yard. So there's some in yellow, red, and green. There is some more rig rack here along with a whole bunch of bias binding or hem tape. I actually don't have room for this in my current storage system. So I think I'm just going to put it in with my zippers um, until I use up enough to put it in with all of my others. Uh, so yeah, these were just part of the box of lace that originally interested me. They did have giant bags of additional binding, but as I said, I didn't really have room for it, so I left those for someone else. I am so in love with this lace. I think it's beautiful. There isn't very much there, but it's a very delicate black and yellow lace edging, and I just can't wait to put this on something because I think it's stunning. There's also a card of lilac soutage cord, and then a little bit of this woven piping. This desperately needs to be rebolted, but this is another very pretty crocheted lace, this time with some blue edging. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of interesting. I'm sure I can find something to use that for, and this needs to be recarded as well. It's seen better days. In this lot, there were also a lot of these very delicate, very pretty lace trims. And I think of these being quite old too, like potentially from the early 1900s. So this is a bolt of one inch wide. Um, this is a slightly more elaborate pattern one and it's maybe a centimeter wide. It's really, really nice. This is a beautiful lace edging. Very, very delicate in terms of the pattern. Another really nice lace. This one's a bit wider. I have two cards of this one centimeter wide, I don't even know what you would call this. I think this is actually used for making more elaborate lace. Um, I have some samplers that I believe the woman who originally owned this made with them, um, but I'm probably just going to use these to decorate the edges of the costume. This is a little bundle of stuff that I haven't even gone through yet, but there's just more lace, some really tiny, very cute quantities of some navy lace, and then some little quantities of what's lace in set. I don't really know how to describe this stuff other than just saying there's more lace, um, but again, just some really, really pretty, very delicate designs. This one's the last of my taste, but I'll still keep it in my stash. 
I don't think there's a whole lot of this here, but it's a pretty cool crocheted lace. This is a neat little lace edging as well. Not too much there, but definitely enough to use. Okay, so this is what I mean by the handmade lace. So this is lace that was created out of this stuff. And I don't think I have the patience to do that. And I don't think I ever will, um, but that's what was originally done with this. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, this woman was incredibly talented. And I hope I can use what lace she did make for something really special, even if I can't continue to make it myself. This is very pretty, a very, very elaborate eyelet lace. More of lace for lace making. And then just a bunch more of those more delicate lace trims, which are just lovely. And there's so much of them here. It's kind of incredible. There are actually, I think, two different types of eyelet lace on this card. Where it's not even really eyelet lace, but it's quite reminiscent of eyelet lace. And then this is just some more of that stuff that I love. I have another bag that is just full of the tiny trims that were used for lace making. I'm probably going to recard these um, and organize them a little bit differently, but this works for now. This is more of that lace that was created with the lace making items I showed you earlier, and it's just stunning. I hope I can find something to use this for because it's beautiful. Maybe for an 1860s headpiece, I think that'd be nice. A little bit of lace for lace inset. This is some more homemade lace trim, I believe, and it's really nice. Some little tiny bits of lace. More little tiny little bits of lace. This is thread, not a spider, just in case you were worried. And this is a very pretty, very delicate lace. This reminds me a lot of lace you see on Edwardian or even Victorian costumes. I've got a different but kind of similar design here that's just a little bit heavier. And then this is the same design as the last one. It's just a larger piece. There was also a rug slash embroidery punch needle buried in there, so that's good to have. And lastly, there were some Vogue Designer original labels. They also had a whole bunch of tags that say whether something is machine washable or not, so I wonder if they sewed professionally for a time or if that was just to remind them with their own garments. But anyway, that is it. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I'd love to know what was your favorite piece and if you've ever been to estate sales and what's your best estate sale find. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to all of you very soon.